Hello, Freakens. Today's lesson is on predator and prey cycles. A couple of definitions I want to review with you. Remember, we said earlier that a predator is any animal that eats another organism. If it eats something else that is alive, typically another animal, we would call that to be a predator. Carnivores are predators who eat only meat. Omnivores would eat both meat and plant materials. We can also have a top carnivore who's the highest level on the food chain. They can pretty much eat anything beneath them and nothing will hunt them. The prey then is the animal that gets eaten by the predator. Now, predators have a lot of adaptations that allow them to be good hunters. They have really good eyesight typically. They have really good senses of smell, and they quite often have very sharp teeth and claws, as you can see in the picture of a shark we have here. It's interesting to note the location of the eyes. In a predator, the eyes are often located on the front of the head because they would use them for hunting. Prey, however, tend to have their eyes located on the sides of their head because it helps them to have a wider range of view around themselves and protect themselves. Prey also have several other adaptations. They might have spines or shells. Sometimes their colors camouflage them, which makes them blend in with the background. Other times, like these pictures here with the monarch and the viceroy butterfly, they will do something that is called mimicry. Monarch butterflies, which we see on the top there, when they're in their larva stage, eat quite often a plant called milkweed. Milkweed is very alkaline, it tastes awful, and is quite often poisonous to other animals. And so monarchs will make themselves incredibly bright and colorful, and other animals learn very quickly that they can't eat this butterfly without getting sick, and that keeps them safe. The viceroy butterfly doesn't have that same milkweed in its diet, so it would be quite fine to eat. Its way of protecting itself is to make itself look like the poisonous butterfly, so that it can therefore protect itself from predators because they think that they'd be eating something that would make them sick. Predators and prey have an interesting relationship. When there's very few predators, there's very few hunters, then the prey population can grow. If you're not being eaten, you have a chance to reproduce and have more offspring. If the predator population is high, well, then they're eating a lot more of their prey and the amount of prey will shrink. However, once the prey level gets down too far, well then the predator population will shrink because they don't have enough food to eat and will not be able to reproduce successfully or raise large amounts of offspring. We have a relationship that when predator population is high, the prey is low, and if the prey is high, the predators are low. It goes up and down backwards around on each other that way. We can take a good example by looking at this cycle here between a snowshoe hare and a lynx. And these numbers were collected over several years. And the numbers that we have on the side there are in thousands. We can see that the numbers relating to the snowshoe hare are on the black line and the lynx are on the red line. And you'll notice that they go up and down and up and down over the years, very much like the graph we saw in our next video on carrying capacity. The other thing that you're going to notice is that the numbers just slightly follow each other. Take a look where we're pointing at the top of the black line there for the snowshoe hare. When the snowshoe hare, the rabbit population spiked here in the 1800s, shortly thereafter there was a spike in lynx. The reason for this is there was lots of food for the lynx. The lynx were healthy, they could have lots of healthy babies, there was lots of food for them to eat. But you'll notice what happens right after the lynx population increases. They're hunting so many snowshoe hares that the population of snowshoe hare drops dramatically. Most of them were getting eaten, and there was very few left remaining members to be able to reproduce. At that point, notice just behind what happens. The lynx didn't have any food to eat, and so their numbers dropped dramatically as well. This graph that we're seeing here is very, very similar to the graph for carrying capacity from our last video. We can see that the average amount of lynx, if we draw a horizontal line through it, would be somewhere between three and 6,000. The average amount of snowsuit hair would also be just slightly higher, but we're using their scale on the other side of the graph, and they would be between 40 and 80,000. Of course, there must always be more 
of prey than there are predators. Your task for this lesson is to get on the internet and see if you can find any other local examples of how prey might use mimicry or other adaptations. Sorry, not prey, but yeah, prey may use mimicry or other adaptations to protect themselves. I gave you the example of the monarch butterfly. See what else you can find and post it in our Teams page.